uh, on 116th Street and Lynch Avenue in the heart of Holland, substituting uh, once again also for the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And those of you uh, who have been following these broadcasts, you know that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is the spiritual head of millions of black Muslims here in the Western Hemisphere. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad is the religious teacher, a religious leader and teacher who has been raised up here in America uh, by God himself for the express purpose of giving salvation to 20 million so-called Negroes. The, these uh, weekly broadcasts, or this weekly, this broadcast, Mr. Muhammad Speaks, is the leading broadcast of spiritual and cultural enlightenment for 20 million so-called Negroes. These broadcasts are designed specifically by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad to, up, to uplift America's 20 million so-called Negroes as a people. The, the, the program, Mr. Muhammad Speaks, is designed uh, specifically to unite us as a people. It's designed to give us freedom, justice, and equality here in America as a people. And those of you who have been listening to these broadcasts who wish to send in criticism of this program, as well as those of you who in, enjoy and appreciate the work that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is doing and would like to send in your fi financial contributions to this program, you may write uh, to Muhammad Mosque Number 2, 5335 South Greenwood Avenue, Chicago, 15, Illinois. And I remind you now, those who want to send in criticism, as well as those who would like to send in contributions, uh, may uh, send your criticisms and your contributions to Muhammad Mosque Number 2, 5335 South Greenwood Avenue, Chicago, 15, Illinois. That's Muhammad is spelled capital M-U-H-A-M-M-A-D apostrophe S. Mosque is spelled capital M-O-S-Q-U-E. Muhammad's Mosque number two, 5335 South Greenwood Avenue, Chicago, Illinois. Chicago, 15, Illinois. We are honored this evening uh, to have such a wonderful and intelligent looking audience here at Muhammad's Mosque number seven in New York City. And uh, to, to show you what a good job and what a blessing it is to be a follower of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, here we are in the heart of Harlem on Friday night. And out of this large audience, I don't think you'll find one person who is drunk. Where else in Harlem can you go on Friday night and not find any so-called Negroes in an audience that, uh, and find an audience where there are no so-called Negroes who have been indulging in alcohol or wine or some other type of intoxicating beverage? This is the only audience right here at Muhammad's Mosque number seven uh, in Harlem tonight where you can go and not find anyone who has a knife in his pocket. This is the only audience where you can go in Harlem tonight and not find anyone who is sitting there getting ready to, to uh, find some kind of trouble with his brother or with his sister. In fact, this is the one place in Harlem where we can say tonight, no one in here is an enemy to anyone else in here. Because by following the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, we have become brothers one to another. Is that right or wrong? The reason we know that there's no one in here who has uh, been drinking intoxicating beverages, and this cannot be said by any other audience in Harlem tonight, is because the, the, the regulations set up by uh, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad for us to follow at every uh, mosque that belongs to Muhammad here in North America, we check everyone at the door. And no one is allowed to enter Muhammad's mosque anywhere in America who has alcohol on his breath. And because of that, we can honestly say and rightly say that you can go nowhere else in Harlem tonight and find this many black people gathered together on a Friday night and be certain that there's not one of them in here with alcohol on his breath. And that right there shows the greatness in the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. When you... Before you can enter Muhammad's mosque, you're checked at the door. If you have a knife in your pocket, you have to leave it behind. If you have a fingernail file in your pocket, you have to leave it behind. Whatever you have in your pocket that can in any way cause harm or injury to anyone, you are compelled to check it at the door. So you can't go anywhere else in Harlem tonight and find this many black people gathered together and know for a certainty that not one of them has anything in his pocket with which he can do harm to his brother. But because of the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, you and I, black people here in America, are learning that we should not carry knives or weapons of any kind. Is that right or wrong? And I think that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad should be given credit for teaching that which will enable the black man and woman here in North America to put away their guns and put away their knives and put away their weapons which they've been, with which they've been wrongly doing each other harm. Is that right or wrong?
All, all praise is due to Allah. You have to admit that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is doing a great work. And we, when you and I who follow him realize the good that he has done for us, we are honored and we are happy. We realize that it, that it is a blessing just to be a follower of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. It's, ble it's a blessing to have a leader who is noble. It's, bless it's a blessing to have a, a leader who is wise. It's a blessing to have a leader who is fearless. And the black man in America for the past 400 years has suffered simply because he has had no leader who was wise, who was noble, or who was fearless. Most of those who professed to lead us in the past, in the past, were, uh, were not fearless. They were afraid of the very enemy against whom they professed to lead us, or out of whose clutches they professed to be leading us. They were not wise leaders because they did not know the correct method to bring freedom, justice, and equality to the 20 million so-called Negroes. But today, we who follow the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, we thank Almighty God, Allah, for giving us a leader and a teacher, a black man who is fearless, who is wise, and who stands before us today without compromise in demanding freedom, justice, and equality for the so-called Negro here in America. Our people today are thinking. They want to know something. They're tired of living on blind faith. They're tired of going to the churches and listening to the preachers who have been teaching them to live on blind faith. The black man in America today is tired of walking blindly. He's tired of believing blindly. He's tired of listening blindly. And he wants someone today who will give him, a, give him an understanding so that he can see the road, so that he can see the way. By the hundreds of thousands, in fact, by the millions, today the Honorable, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, the number of black people who are following the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is increasing. There, there is a great in, increase going on among our people in the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, in the program of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, because they're getting a better understanding of the aims of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. What is, what is the Honorable Elijah Muhammad really teaching the so-called Negro? What is the Honorable Elijah Muhammad's program among the so-called Negroes? Uh, what are the Honorable Elijah Muhammad's aims for the so-called Negroes? Beloved brothers and sisters, and especially those of our radio audience, you probably are asking the question, why should the Honorable Elijah Muhammad in the first place have a teaching specifically designed for Negroes? Why should the Honorable Elijah Muhammad have a program specifically designed for Negroes? And why should the Honorable Elijah Muhammad aims be specifically de de uh, designed for the so-called Negro? The only way you can ever understand the answer to those questions is to first get an answer to the question, who are the so-called Negroes? When you find out who the so-called Negroes in America really are, then you will find out why the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is concentrating specifically upon them. When you find out where the so-called Negroes came from, and who were they before they came here? What language did they speak before they came to America? What flag represented the so-called Negroes before they came to America? What God protected the so-called Negroes before they came to America? And because the knowledge of the identity uh, and the history and the culture of these so-called Negroes here in America today has been kept a secret uh, from the people of America, it's impossible for them to rightly and fully understand why the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad are specific, specific, specifically cut out and designed for the so-called Negroes. All praise is due to Allah. Is the Honorable Elijah Muhammad really a man of God? Is the Honorable Elijah Muhammad uh, uh, mentioned in the Bible? Do the followers of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad believe in the Bible? Are Negroes mentioned in the Bible? Is the so-called Negro in America mentioned in the Bible? And if the so-called Negro in America is mentioned in the Bible, is America mentioned in the Bible? If America is mentioned in the Bible, is the trouble that America is in today mentioned in the Bible? If the Negro is, is mentioned in the Bible, uh, is the condition that the so-called Negro is in today mentioned in the Bible? Brothers and sisters, you know that the Bible says, uh, uh, blessed are those who read and understand. If reading the Bible alone was sufficient to make a man blessed, the Negroes in America would be the most blessed people on earth. Because no one reads more Bibles than the so-called American Negro. No one has more Bible than the so-called American Negro. No one believes more firmly in the Bible than the so-called American Negro. And no one catches more hell than the so-called American Negro. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us that to, to, to read the Bible is not enough. To believe in the Bible is not enough. 
You've got to understand the Bible just like the Bible itself says. Blessed are those who read and understand. And the Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us that one of the curses that afflicted you and me in the past was our lack of understanding concerning the Bible. And the, and the, the purpose or a part of the mission that God has placed upon the shoulders of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad here in America today is to give the black man in America an understanding of the Bible. To give the black man in America an understanding of where he fits in the Bible. To give the black man in America an understanding of where America fits in the Bible. And to give uh, uh, the black man in America a better understanding of the day and time that we're living in today according to the Bible. Do you understand that? The, 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 the Honorable Elijah Muhammad has pointed out that the Bible is referred to as, a holy, as the Holy Bible. And the black man in America has taken it just like that. But when you look at the Bible, you, you see, brothers and sisters, that holy, as we've been taught by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, means that which has not been diluted, mixed, or tampered with. Bible means book. And the reason the Bible is called a holy Bible is because it's supposed to be the Word of God. But when you look beyond the word holy Bible, you see it written there, King James Version. And the Honorable Elijah Muhammad has taught us that it's impossible for uh, something to be a version at the same time to be holy. The Bible is not a holy book today, but it's King James Version of what that holy book originally was supposed to have said. And in order for you and me to understand what kind of version King James would give of what God said, we'd have to know something about King James. And King James was a wicked man. King James was a slave maker. King James was a slave master. King James did not intend for the people of this earth to have an understanding of God's word. So when King James had it translated, he had it translated in a language that a fool could not understand. He had it translated in a language that a slave could not understand. He had it translated by poets. Is that right or wrong? And the Honorable Elijah Muhammad has shown us how when a poet speaks, he speaks in the language of symbolism. A symbol is something that says one thing and means another thing. And a poet usually says one thing and means another thing. And the Bible usually says one thing and means another thing. And the only one that can tell you and me what the Bible actually means is a man whom God has given the understanding to. And for the first time among black people in America, God has given you and me a man of understanding. A man who understands the Bible. All praise is due to Allah. Today here in America, for the first time, the black man is getting an understanding of the Bible. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad doesn't condemn the Bible. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad explains the Bible. And those who have been lying to you about the Bible are the ones who are also condemned by that explanation. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad has pointed out to us that the poet translated the Bible. And when the, when the poet, in the, an example of it is, brothers and sisters, is in the Bible it says God is a rock. Now, if you take that just like it is, that means that God is a stone. In another part of the Bible, it refers to God as a mountain, Mount Zion. And if you take that just like it is, then that means God is a mountain, a big old pile of dirt. Another part of the Bible, it refers to God as a lily in the valley. And if you take it just like it is, that means God is a flower. And in another part of the Bible, it, he, he is referred to as the bright and morning star. And if you take it just like it is, then you, you think that God is a star somewhere shining up in the sky. But the Honorable Elijah Muhammad says that it's right if you understand it. It's wrong when you don't understand it. The Bible didn't, is not supposed to mean that God is a rock. And when you sit in church, you poor Negroes who don't understand, talking about the rock of ages, and you think that your God is a rock, it's only because you don't understand. The Bible didn't mean that God is a rock, but that rock is, is a, a solid. God is firm like a rock. God is not a rock, but God is like a rock. God is not a mountain, but God is like a mountain. He's immovable. He's above all others. Uh, God is not a lily. He's not a flower, but he's like a flower. He's like a lily in the valley. He's beautiful like a lily. God is not a star up in the sky shining someplace, but God is like a star. As that bright and morning star points the way through the darkness of the night, God today does the same thing for his people who have been, who have been in spiritual darkness. God is not a rock. God is not a mountain. God is not a lily in the valley. God is not a, a bright and morning star, but God is like all of these things. And the purpose of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the mission of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is to give the so-called Negroes here in America an understanding of these things. To bring God out of the sky and place him right down here on this earth. 
So the mind of the 20 million million Negroes will come out of the sky and get down to earth and start doing something for yourself. The Bible refers to God as a lamb, the lamb of God. Not that he's a four-legged animal with woolly hair, but God is like a lamb. It also refers there in the Bible as the dead. And because the so-called Negroes take everything that they read in the Bible literally, they think that when the Bible says dead, it means those people who have gone down in the grave. But the Honorable Elijah Muhammad uh, points out to us that just like the Bible don't mean a real rock, and just like the Bible doesn't mean a real mountain, and just like the Bible doesn't mean a real flower when it says lily in the valley, and just like the Bible doesn't mean a real star when it says the bright morning star, and just like the, the Bible doesn't mean a four-legged sheep when it says a lamb, the Bible also doesn't mean someone that's physically dead when it speaks of the resurrection. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us that there are 20 million black people in America who are dead. 20 million black people in America who are politically dead because they're second-class citizens, because they don't have civil rights. They're politically dead. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us that there are 20 million black people in America who are historically dead. They have no, no knowledge whatsoever of their own history. They're culturally dead cut off completely from the culture of their own time. Is that right or wrong? They are mentally dead, in complete darkness to the knowledge of their real self or their real identity. And the Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us that the dead that are mentioned in the Bible are none other than the so-called Negroes right here in America. They are also referred to in the Bible under the sign of lost sheep. That does not mean that there are some four-legged animals on this earth that are going to be lost somewhere, but some people who are down on their knees today uh, serving the white man. Down on their knees here in America today following the white man. Down on their knees here in America today begging the white man for civil rights. Begging the white man for a job. Uh, uh, beaten and abused by the white man and don't even have the strength to fight back. Like a sheep, like a lamb caught in the midst of thorns. When a lamb, the Bible predicted that in the last day when that lost sheep would be found, he'd be like a lamb caught in the midst of thorns. And when a lamb is caught in the midst of thorns, if he tries to go forward, he's tricked. If he backs up, he's tricked. If he goes sideways, he's tricked. And that sign was used in the Bible to depict the condition of the so-called Negroes because today there are 20 million black people in America. When you try and go, you're surrounded by a thorny-hearted people. You're surrounded by a people whose heart is like thorns. When you try and go forward and mix with them, you receive pain for your labor. They don't want you socially. They don't want you politically. They don't want you uh, educationally. They don't want you in any way to be around them. Is that right or wrong? And you are constantly in pain when you run up against one. So the Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us that when the Bible refers to these things, brothers and sisters, it does not mean that you shouldn't believe in the Bible, but it means you should understand it. And the Negro preacher here in America should get an understanding of it before he preaches it to our poor, dumb, deaf, and blind Negro brothers and sisters. All praise is due to Allah. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad has taught us that, uh, as I asked you the question earlier, is, is the so-called Negro mentioned in the Bible? Yes. Whenever you read the Bible and you read anything about the slaves, you're reading about the Negro in America. Whenever you read about the lost sheep, you're reading about the Negro in America. Whenever you read in the Bible about people who were taken from their own land and made to dwell in another land, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us that you're reading about the Negro in America. Whenever you read in the Bible about the house of bondage, the land of bondage, the land of slavery. You're reading about America. America is hidden in the Bible under the symbolic picture of Babylon. America is hidden in the Bible under the symbolic, symbolic picture of Egypt. America is hidden in the Bible behind the symbolic picture of Sodom. Babylon was a slave empire. Babylon was one of the wealthiest empires of its day. Is that right or wrong? Babylon was a land that came into existence and became economically strong on the backs of her slaves. The history of Babylon is the same as the history of America. Uh, Egypt was a place where a wicked king named Pharaoh would not let God's people go. He would not let God's people have complete rights in his own land, and still he didn't want, want them to go to the promised land. And the Honorable Elijah Muhammad has taught us that that's just a symbolic picture of right here today in North America. The so-called Negroes are in the house of bondage today. Uh, America is the house of bondage for the so-called Negroes. And just as the, as the Hebrews in the land of bondage had a man named Moses raised up for them by, by God himself, 
the Honorable Elijah Muhammad has been raised up by God from the midst of the so-called Negroes as a, as a leader and a teacher for the so-called Negroes today. As a leader and a teacher for the slaves today. And, and just as it was the job of Moses not to integrate his people with the slave master, it's not the job of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad to inter, inter, integrate the black people of America with the white man of America today. Uh, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad has taught us that Moses' job was to bring about complete separation of the Hebrews from their slave master and, and lead them to a land of their own. <laughs> All praise is due to Allah. And that's the same way today, brothers and sisters, with the followers of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. God has raised the Honorable Elijah Muhammad for the express purpose of being a light to the people here in America who in the past have been in darkness. It tells you in the Bible, the people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them has the light shine. Today, when, in the past, when we read that in the church, we didn't understand it. Today, we who have been taught by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, when we read it, we know what it means. That a people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. No one on earth ever walked in thicker darkness than the 20 million black people who are called Negroes. No one on earth ever walked in thicker darkness than the 20 million black ex-slaves here in America. Lived in, living in a land in the very shadow of death. No one on earth has, has ever lived closer to death than the so-called Negro here in America. In Mississippi, you're walking in the shadow of death. In Georgia, you're walking in the shadow of death. In Alabama, you're walking in the shadow of death. In New York City, you're walking in the shadow of death. But the wise prophets in the Bible looking down through the wheel of time and seeing you and me here in America today, they prophesied. The people that walked in darkness, the so-called Negroes, who were in the grave of ignorance right here in America, the people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. Where has this light come from? It was predicted that the sun, the light of Islam, would rise in the west in the last day. And you and I who walked in darkness here for 400 years, in spiritual darkness, in mental darkness, in social darkness, in economic darkness. Today, by following the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, we see a great light. We who have lived here in the land, in the very shadow of death, by uniting behind the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, we now have no more fear of that death. We now have no more fear of the man that brought about that death. Because the Honorable Elijah Muhammad has given us a knowledge of our God. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad has given us a knowledge of ourselves. The Honorable Eli Elijah Muhammad has given us a knowledge of the condition that we've been in. And he's given us a knowledge of the man that produced that condition. And he's given us a knowledge of what we must do by following God and his messenger today to rise above that condition and get out of the clutches of the man who is responsible for that condition. All praise is due to Allah. So the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is bringing salvation to 20 million so-called Negroes here in America. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad is fulfilling the prophecy in the Bible concerning the man who in the last day would lead the lost sheep, who would lead the, the blind by a way that they knew not before. This is the work that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is doing for the so-called Negroes here in America today. He's not teaching so-called Negroes to hate the white man. But no one can deny the fact that your friend will not make a slave out of you. Your friend will not hang you on a tree. Your friend will not treat you like an animal. Is that right or wrong? So, so it's not the Honorable Elijah Muhammad who is teaching hate. It's the man who has been hanging you on a tree who is, who is teaching hate. It's the man who made a slave out of you that's teaching hate. It's the man who has robbed you and yet deprived you of your right that's teaching here. And today God is here to bring friendship and peace and goodwill all over the planet Earth. And those who do not want to be friends have to be removed from the planet Earth. Thank you, Minister Malcolm X of Temple Number 7, New York. And I am sure that our radio listeners enjoyed this beautiful lecture given by you. And will you plan to be with us again next week over this station 
to another program from Muhammad Mark Radio Broadcast. And I think for the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, may I extend to you and yours a very pleasant good evening. <laughs>